I just finished teaching a class in building the anarchist tool chest and I promised my students that I would show them how to install one of these hinges from Horton Brasses that are handmade, which means that they all vary a little bit, unlike the PB409, the butt hinge, all of which are interchangeable, also from Horton Brasses. So these just take a little bit more concentration to get them right. Let's take a look at the tools I'll use first and then we'll get going. Um, I have a selection of chisels. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. Uh, I have a pencil because I can't see very well, so I have my beloved 0.5 millimeter pencil which drops into my chisel lines. I have a marking knife. I have a tight mark cutting gauge and I have my little router plane which is my favorite tool and a screwdriver with which to set it. And of course, I have the hinge. So I'm just going to put this hinge in on a fake uh, underside of the lid, basically. This part lips over the back of the chest. You do a mortise for this part of the leaf and then the other part just gets face uh, screwed onto the chest. But we do need to put a mortise on the back rail of the lid for it to work properly. And I never know exactly where this knuckle needs to end up. So I always start when I'm installing these just with the leaf aligned so that it is on the edge of that rail. And now I'm going to trace around it with a marking knife. I have to hold it really tightly in place. I don't want it to move on me. And if I had two of these handy, I'd show you that I designate one for each of its mortises because, as I mentioned, they are not interchangeable. So this mortise won't necessarily fit the other hinge that comes in the Anarchist Reforged Kit. All right, so I've got it all marked out here. Now I'm going to chase those lines with my pencil so that I can see them better. My marking gauge, I'm cutting gauge technically because it has a round wheel on it, and I'm going to set it to the thickness of the hinge plate. So you can see I've got that set, and now I'm going to mark my baseline. I could also just set my router plane to the baseline and mark it that way, but I didn't. I have a cutting gauge, so I might as well use it. This is a little sharper than the edge of the knife on my router plane at the moment, so I'm going to get a crisper line by doing it this way. But if I wanted to use my router plane, I could just drop the knife on it, the cutter on it, set everything where it needs to be, and just drag it sideways across the bottom. And instead, having set my knife, or set it with the knife, I'm going to go ahead, wow, look at that, I got it perfect. That's unusual. So now I have it set to the exact depth that I just marked, just by luck. I'm gonna tighten it down. Knife in the lines around the hinge leaf very deeply. So before I get started, I'm going to want to deepen them slightly with a chisel. Uh, I'm going to put the flat side toward the keeper, the bevel toward the waist, as almost always. I'm going to grab off camera there. I forgot to mention my mallet earlier, but I do need it. I'm not strong enough to just muscle my way through this. And you'll notice that I'm only deepening this a little bit. If I were to push down really hard, hit it really hard, the bevel on this side could force the chisel over the line that I've marked and then I'd have a somewhat sloppy fit. It wouldn't keep the chest and the hinges from working, but it wouldn't look as uh, nice as I would like it to. So we'll deepen these lines before moving on. I am going to just take a little V cut out at my back wall there, and I'm going to do that on all the sides. It's basically a first class cut, just like you've heard Chris and me talk about for cutting off the half pin waist on the pin on the tail board when doing dovetails, and that's from Robert Waring's book, The Essential Woodworker. So now you can see I have a V groove all the way around, and that will help uh, keep my chisel in line for the rest of the work. To move forward and remove the rest of the so work. So because I've deepened these lines, now I have a little bit of room for the bevel to fall into as I deepen them. Because I've got that V cut there, I should say. Sorry. So now I can hit it a little harder. All the way around. I've got my chisel 
straight up and down. And this is one of the few times I'll use a larger chisel. I don't like to try to displace a lot of wood with a wide chisel, even though it seems like it would be faster. It really isn't. So now I have a couple of options. I can either just sort of get started cutting the waste with a bunch of chisel chops wherever. It just helps break it up and helps it come out more easily. I can come across with my chisel and peel it out like so. See, if I'd been a smart girl, I'd have done this in pine. It would have looked far more impressive. Or I can take my router plane and I've got the depth stop set to my final depth. So if I want to, and this is a little bit more controlled if you don't feel confident with your chisel work yet, I can set it and just bring it down in a series of passes, deepening my baseline every time. That's still a pretty, pretty healthy cut for that little router plane there. Um, but that is certainly a valid way to do it. The reason I tend not to use this approach is because the router plane, out of the selection of things on my bench here, is more difficult or takes more time or attention to sharpen than my chisels do just like why I usually use a saw to a uh, coping saw to remove my dovetail waste. I can sharpen a coping saw quickly. I can just put a new blade in place. Uh, a chisel is faster for me to sharpen than the router plane. So the less I use it, the better in many cases. However, there is nothing wrong with using it in this fashion. And now I would drop the blade again, just a little bit more. You can't take a really big bite with the router plane, especially this little one. Before I do that, I'll need to deepen my scribe lines again. And I can continue working in this fashion down to the bottom. I have removed most of the waste with a series of paring cuts with my chisel. I think I'm ready to drop in to the baseline with the router plane. I'm just going to deepen the outside edges, the extents of the hinge gain, the hinge mortise, you can call it whatever you want, those are the two proper terms. This hole here that I'm making in a piece of wood, I should, I hope, oh that's still a pretty healthy bite, I might want to pair off a little more or get my large router plane. There we go will leave me with a nice smooth bottom. And I do like a nice smooth bottom. Or, you know, a semi-smooth bottom will do. I'm less particular in my old age. Now hopefully this will fit right in there. There we go, that's a nice fit. It's level here in the middle. The only thing I might need to change is once I have it on the chest, there's the possibility that in order for the lid to close properly, not bind and fit where it needs to. I'll need to move it forward a little bit. No problem. If I have to do that, I can just move forward with my uh, chisel or I can reset my guide here or my cutting gauge here to uh, bring that line out an even amount all the way across and recut it as needed. But you can see it's pretty simple. Really the only difference between this and the butt hinges, is that having cut this mortise to fit this hinge leaf, I have now dedicated this one to its mortise. Don't have to do that with this uh, particular hinge, but it's important on anything handmade that you do uh, designate it to its uh, end mortise. That's it, pretty easy. Mm -hmm.